Hello again, my name is Eric. I'm the program coordinator for the Spurs program. Of course, you know Ashley Hi. from former videos. We're back again to introduce to you the rhetorical analysis assignment, which is the first full essay you'll be producing this semester. The rhetorical analysis, you probably have already started thinking about it, talking about it a little bit. Of course, you have the prompt in front of you, and that's going to give you really a sort of fuller information about what the expectations of the assignments are and some, some advice for meeting those expectations. So really the purpose of this video is to just sort of give you an overview about what we think is important to know about rhetorical analysis, what it is, what it does, what it does not do. Uh, we want to give you a few reminders to keep in mind as you are going through the writing process. And then I think we also want to spend a little bit of time at the end talking about what we think is the most difficult or most challenging part of writing this particular essay. So to start off with, Ashley, why don't you tell us how you introduce rhetorical analysis to your students, what you tell them that it is, what it does, its, it's form or its function. Great. Well, when I talk about rhetorical analysis with my class, I tell them that what they're doing in a rhetorical analysis is they're analyzing how a text, how an author in this text, makes an argument to a certain audience. Um, so I really need them to keep in mind that an author isn't just arguing in a vacuum. They're not just producing words in a balloon floating in space. There's an audience there. There's a very specific venue of publication. There's either a newspaper, a magazine, it might be a speech. There's many, many venues. Um, but the rhetorical analysis considers how this text is appearing, you know, to which audience, and what kind of word choice, um, what kind of rhetorical appeals does the author use to be successful in that argument? How do they connect to that audience to make their argument? That's how I explain it. So for you, your students, the first thing you're having them do is look for who is the audience, who absolutely. is the intended audience of this essay. Yes, yeah. absolutely. The most important thing we talk about in this unit is constantly audience, audience, audience. And I know you've learned a lot about audience in unit one, so you want to keep those skills at the front of your brain for this rhetorical analysis. Yeah, that's great advice. When I talk to my students about the rhetorical analysis, I really tell them that what you're involved here is a descriptive exercise, not an evaluative exercise. So the goal of the rhetorical analysis is not to evaluate whether or not you're reading a good or bad argument, not even to say whether you agree or disagree with the author's position. Theoretically, a good rhetorical analyst should be able to describe what's going on in an essay, describe who that essay is intended for, who the audience is, and, and disagree with it wholeheartedly, and still be able to do that clearly and completely. And as a reader of your paper, we should have no idea whether you agree or disagree with the position, because what's important, as Eric pointed out, is that description of how that argument is being made to an audience. Great. So just to recap, the rhetorical analysis is not an evaluation. You're not judging whether or not this was an efficient or inefficient argument, a good or bad argument, a moral or immoral argument. You're not even judging whether or not you agree with it or disagree with it. What you're doing is talking about the argument's content and the argument's structure. You're explaining what does it say, and then you're explaining how does it say it, and how are those things interrelated. Okay. And what you'll be using to do that is um, rhetorical appeals, which is what uh, the bulk of this unit will, will talk about. Um, things like ethos and pathos and logos. Yes. Let's be clear here up front, even though there are other videos and other assignments on other days that deal with the appeals, let's be clear up front that every argument contains all those appeals. So every argument is going to have a little bit of the appeal to ethos, the appeal to pathos, the appeal to logos. You'll learn what those appeals are as we go through the next couple of weeks. But if you'll take our word for it, or, or at least this is our argument, I guess different people can disagree, we're arguing that in every argument you'll have a little bit of all three of these appeals. Okay? So when you do the analysis, you're going to have to talk about all three of these appeals. The trick, and I think this gets us to what is maybe the most challenging part of writing this essay, the trick is knowing how to prioritize what you're discussing in that essay. Because not every essay uses all these appeals equally. Right? Not all these essays use language in the same way or in the same way throughout the entire essay. Right? Sometimes authors or writers or speakers or filmmakers or whoever it is, they rely on, for one section, this kind of rhetorical style. And on this section, this kind of rhetorical style. Or and this, to make this point, they use ethos. But to make this point, they use pathos. Right? So 
you need to prioritize which of these appeals, which of these rhetorical strategies is most significant, most important, most prevalent, in fact, right? Um, any advice on how, on how to do that? Well, as you'll see in the next few videos on ethos, pathos, and logos, you'll learn a little bit more about how to notice these different strategies uh, coming into play. I think my best advice in terms of prioritizing, again, comes back to audience, is to think about who is this written for? Who is the author trying to engage with? What beliefs and ideologies do these people have? And how do you notice the author reaching out to meet those? Are they you know, using a lot of emotions to connect with um, an audience they know is going to be highly emotional on a topic? Or are they minimizing the use of emotions because they're in a forum that is more concerned with logical reasoning? Um, and emotions might not seem as, as appropriate. I think, again, the audience and those beliefs and ideologies that you've learned about already will help you sort of guide um, your, your view of how this argument is functioning. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So ultimately what we're asking you to do with the rhetorical analysis is to describe the relationship between the three appeals and between the language that's used in those appeals, okay? So really you're describing, if I know who the audience is, then I have a pretty good guess, or I can speculate with some confidence about the ratio of appeals. I know why this appeal is most prevalent, and I know why this one is least prevalent, and I can describe why that relationship exists, why those ratios are the way they are. So that description is really what we're urging you to do here with this assignment, okay? Yeah, and I think that um, as you get more in the process of drafting and you start producing thesis statements, you'll notice that your thesis really encapsulates what Eric just described, kind of pointing out the author is using these appeals to make their argument um, on this audience because of these beliefs and ideologies underpinning the audience. Absolutely. So if you're looking at the, at the prompt in front of you, you'll see that we're asking you to go through the assignment packet, the reading packet, which you should have read all the articles in it by now, and you're going to select one, and that one is going to be the focus of your entire essay. So what you're doing is basically deconstructing or reverse engineering or dissecting the kind of the way you dissect a frog, uh, how the argument's put together. Again, content and structure. What does it say? How does it say it? Okay, so you'll pick one of, from the packet, and you will write the analysis on that one part. So that's how this is a very different assignment from your first essay, um, which was the group annotated bibliography. In those, you dealt with a number of different texts. And this one, you're really focusing on this single text and how this text is operating. Who is the author? What's their background? What kind of argument are they making? What is the situation they're arguing in? And again, so important, who is that audience? What do they believe? What are their ideologies? I and mean, how does all of that work together? Great, great. A uh, couple of last minute things you should remember before we sign off here for now. About three to four pages, so 900 to 1200 words, which is less than it seems. Double okay. spaced, of course. Double spaced, following all the sort of um, format guidelines that are in the course policy statement, outlined in the course of the policy statement. We're also, since it's not an evaluative exercise, we're looking for neutrality. We're looking for being unbiased here. Right? Again, as Ashley pointed out, we should read your essay and we should know more about why that argument exists, how it's constructed, the way it's constructed, and we should know basically nothing about your opinion on it. That will come in paper three. <laughs> That'll be your next assignment. Great. The last bit of advice is just to make sure you read the prompt carefully and you meet the expectations of the assignment. If you're confused about the expectations, I would talk to your teacher or your UT instructor partner, or you can always contact me. Absolutely. Great. Happy writing. Best of luck. Take care.